Hi everyone, it's Jen here. So, ooh, what's going on with my hair? Um, <laughs> anyway, sorry. So I've actually tried to do this video several times, but it just was not working out. But I decided that no matter how messed up it comes out today, or no matter how many times I get interrupted today, I'm going to get it done and get it out. So it's not being posted on a Friday. Today is a Tuesday, but I was trying to post this last Friday. And it just wasn't happening. So, as you can guess from the title, this is um, Anakin's birth story. And then I will show you him at the end, if he allows me to. Looks like he's trying to be fussy. Hold on. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so, I guess we'll just, I'll just get into it. So... Uh, the week of my due date, I guess you could say, because my due date was November 9th. Um, that week, November 9th falls on a fall, fell, sorry, on a Thursday. That Monday is when start, things started happening. So Monday, um, I had some contractions, and they were kind of on and off. There was no pattern, but they hurt. Like hell. So basically, I'll put it this way. They acted like Braxton Hicks contractions because there was no pattern to them. It was on and off. Um, sometimes I could go three hours without feeling one, and then I could start feeling them for two hours straight. But they felt like real contractions. So they were acting like Braxton Hicks, but they felt like real contractions. So that was like... Monday was horrible. It was all day long, on and off, and it didn't really completely, completely fully stop until about 7 o'clock at night. Now this is where it gets weird, because um, it stopped at 7 o'clock at night, and I'm like, okay. Tuesday morning when I woke up, so Tuesday morning would be November 7th, they had started again, and I was like, okay, this feels really weird, and I'm not liking it. I was like, okay, even though there's no pattern and I know I'm probably going to get sent home, I just want to go to the hospital so I can make sure this is not in my head, that I'm actually feeling what I'm feeling, and yeah, to see if it was doing anything. So the week before, at my doctor's appointment, so I think this was um, November 2nd or 3rd, it could have been Thursday or Friday, I can't remember, um, I was checked down there and it said I was at two centimeters. So Tuesday, that November 7th, when I decided to go in to see if what I was feeling was all in my head or if I was actually feeling, they we get there and sure enough, my contractions are showing up on the monitor and they go ahead and they check me and they're like, oh, you're, you're at a three. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> yay, <laughs> what I'm feeling is actually doing something. Um, she goes, you're at a three, but because there's no pattern and stuff, you're not in active labor, but this is what we're going to do. We want you to walk around our halls for an hour. If you have progress, then we're going to keep you and give you something to kind of help things progress a little bit faster. If you don't have any progress, we're going to send you home. So I said, so me and my husband were like, okay, let's, let's do that. So for the first 30 minutes, <laughs> we spent it downstairs at the hospital in the cafeteria because my husband was hungry I was hungry we pretty much literally we woke up and went straight to the hospital we didn't stop anywhere to eat anything or anything like that so and the whole walk down to the cafeteria I want to say every five minutes we had to stop because I would have a strong contraction and I'm, I'm serious guys these contractions felt really strong they just had no pattern to them and sometimes they would last for 30 seconds, other times they would last for two minutes, and it was completely weird and whatever. So needless to say, after we ate, we went back upstairs and walked around for the last 20 minutes of my hour, and then we went back in, and I was checked again, and unfortunately I had no progress. So they sent me home. And so I spent the rest of the day at home feeling like crap because that it continued. Um, and then this is what I said where it gets weird. Again, right about 7 o'clock at night, everything stopped. Like 7 o'clock it stopped and I was thinking, oh, maybe it'll start again or whatever. But no, it stopped and come 10, 11 o'clock, I go to bed. Then Wednesday morning I wake up. So Wednesday morning is November 8th. Sorry, I keep looking over here because my daughter's um, after school activity calendar is right there and I haven't changed it for December yet. 
Uh, so it still has November up there, so I'm using that as my date reference because I've, yeah, totally forgot. So uh, Wednesday, November 8th, I woke up and bam, they started again. So I don't know what it is. <laughs> Morning, all day long until about 7 o'clock at night, for three days in a row, I had contractions and it was completely weird or whatever. So that Wednesday, all day long, and at this point, at first, I wasn't keeping track of them because I was like, it's just going to be like yesterday and it's just going to be like freaking Monday. They're just going to be irregular, um, slightly painful, irregular. So I was like, I wasn't keeping track of them in the beginning. But then I got, um, I got really, really confused at one point because they all of a sudden, like it's like a switch had been switched or whatever and they still was no pattern well there was a slight pattern the amount how long they lasted started being like the same but the amount of time in between was no pattern so let's say five minutes passed I would have a contraction and it would last for exactly about 50 seconds and then let's say two minutes passed and then I would have another contraction that lasted exactly 50 seconds so the um, how long they were lasting started to become it, that part started to become more consistent but the in-between was not and so I was like uh, should I or should I not and so I went ahead by the time this happened, it's been it's like at six o'clock at night. So my clinic that I usually go to for my pregnancy um, was already closed. They closed at five. So I called the office. I had to go through an all call nurse who had to call a physician in the hospital. Left a message with the physician so the physician could call me because it would be an on call physician. So I waited after I did my whole process of calling the clinic, getting hold of the overnight nurse, and she telling me that she will get a, a an over an all call an on call physician to call me back. I waited maybe about five minutes and then I got a call back from that physician and I told her what was going on. That the day before I went, I had a I had no progress after being monitored for about an hour and then how today I was having these weird contractions they kind of they slightly felt like they were stronger but I wasn't sure and she goes um, the physician she told me she goes no don't come in yet but if you do notice that they do get ex like extremely painful to where you can't handle it or you finally notice that the pattern comes becomes consistent between not only how long it lasts but in between each one monitor it for an hour and if that within that hour it stays consistent then go ahead and come in and she suggested that i take a bath to kind of help my body relax and stuff she said that might even stop them um she said that if um, I take some Tylenol, I could take, that I was allowed to take Tylenol to help with the pain and stuff it was, if it was bothering me or whatever, so, um, so that's what I did. I followed her advice, I didn't go in, I took some Tylenol, took a bath. Well, let me tell you, that bath did something, because not 30 minutes after I got out of my bath, they all of a sudden something clicked and I was having contractions every two minutes no sorry Ugh. I was having contractions every five minutes and they were lasting a good two minutes long and as I'm I was like okay when I started noticing that I was somewhat because I wasn't exactly keeping track like with my app or whatever I was just like making note of okay here goes one in my head but when I started noticing that I kept saying it like pretty much almost it felt like the same amount of time in between I was like okay let me go ahead and start keeping track so this is about 9 30 at night that Wednesday night I get my pad my tablet and I have a app on it for a contraction timer and I started timing them at 9 30 and my husband he starts noticing that I'm having like the pain oh my god like they got so much stronger that it was bad enough that I couldn't even talk through them I had to sit there and breathe and so my husband's like are you okay I'm like I'm gonna monitor these for an hour but these ones these ones hurt worse than anything and I think we might actually finally be in active labor 
And he goes, okay, just let me know. He's sitting on the floor next to me playing um, Xbox, but he plays Xbox Live with friends and stuff, so... <laughs> I'm monitoring for about 40 minutes, and I'm like, eh, he go, and he checks up on me. He's like, how are you feeling now? I was like, oh, it's still the same. We got about 20 minutes left of me monitoring, but I think this might be it. So he goes ahead and he warns the friends that he's playing with that he's probably going to end up leaving in the next 20, 30 minutes. Um, so they would under they understand or whatever. The and these friends aren't just friends that he only has on Xbox Live. And he plays with friends that we actually hang out with in real life. Just they like to play a lot of Xbox. Um, so I monitor it for the whole hour, and it never changes. Um, and so I'm like, okay, these are really painful. I can't. I can't talk through them. I have to sit here. I have to breathe. My legs are shaking through them. It's lasted an hour. I'm like, let's go in, please. And right about that time, this part's funny. Right about that time, his mom comes in and she's wanting to check up on me. Yeah. Um, because she's known, we live with her, so she knows what's been going on. So she wanted to come check up on me. And so he starts telling, like, he's getting as he's like getting up to um get because he's wearing shorts and it's kind of chilly outside so he was going to change into just some pants right as he was getting up to go change so we could leave his mom walks in and decides to have a conversation <laughs> and i'm just sitting here on the couch like ow ow and so at one point i i like i looked at his mom and i'm like i'm really sorry and then i looked at him and i was like go put pants on now <laughs> And so, I, it was funny to me. Anyway, so I went, or I went. He went, got pants on. We go, we get to the hospital, and they check me. Guys, that whole time, I had only dilated one. So, Tuesday, they said I had gone to a three. That Wednesday night, when I finally get there, barely out of four. And I'm just like, oh my god. But I'm like, oh. At least they're not sending me home. The only reason why I didn't get sent home, because mind you, my contractions were five minutes apart and they were lasting for two minutes. They like it to be kind of the opposite. They like for it to be happening every two minutes and lasting about five minutes. Um, or anywhere from 40 seconds to five minutes long is good, but the time in between needs to be closer. They like to have contractions at least two minutes apart before they keep you because it takes that means five minutes apart means it's taking so long the only reason why i was um able to stay was while they were monitoring every time i had a contraction anakin's heart rate would drop and so because his heart rate was dropping they were like okay you have to stay with us so this is about See, by the time we left the house and got to the hospital, I want to say it was probably about 11.20, because our hospital's not that far away. And so, at 11.20, four centimeters dilated, I got to stay because his heart rate kept dropping in between every contraction, or during every contraction. And so, I get a room, and then I want to say it was somewhere, um, somewhere, I can't really remember. I'm skipping a part of the story. Uh-oh. <laughs> Let me go back. So, first I have to explain something. With my first pregnancy, or my first labor with my oldest daughter, Lily, um, it, it was my first time. So, I had no clue what I was doing. I had no clue what was going on. Nothing. So, when they said, oh, we have this painkiller, we have this painkiller, we have this painkiller, what would you like? I was just like, just give me whatever. Give me, you know. I was... <laughs> I was unprepared so I forgot what the medicine is called but it goes in through your IV and supposedly it makes it just it's just supposed to make you a little drowsy and just kind of help you sleep a little that first time that mm, it knocked me out like I mean as soon as it went in I was out like a light with her and I hated it because before I got knocked out, my pain level was like really low. Like it was hurtful and yeah, it was making me cry. But when I look back at it now, I'm like, I could have totally handed that, handled that pain a little bit better on my own. 
um, for a little bit longer, but I didn't know any better or anything like that because this was my first time and I didn't do any of those, you know, tours or classes they recommend that you take or anything like that. So, um, anyway, so I got knocked out with my pain level really low. Now, when I look back at it, I realized it was low. And then when I, when the medicine wore off and I woke up, my pain level was like way up here and I totally could not handle it. I woke up screaming. That's how bad it was. I woke up screaming because the pain level difference was so different between when I went to sleep and when I woke up. And since I didn't transition with it as it was getting stronger, I felt like that's what caused me not to be able to handle it completely when I woke up. <sighs> So I vowed for the next time I gave birth that I would never accept that medicine ever again. Like I, re I refuse it because it knocks me out so quick and everything. So when I had Rosalie, I refused that medicine. I told them, no, I wanna go as long as I can on my own. And then when I say I can't handle it no more, I straightly just want the epidural. And that's what I did. With Rosalie, I was able to make it all the way up to six centimeters on my own. Um, asked for the epidural. They gave me the epidural. I think I was about eight centimeters when I finally got the epidural. Um, and then five minutes after I got the epidural, it was time to push her out. So um, I did really good with Rosalie. With him, I don't know what I was thinking. I, I don't I don't know. I think it was just because I went through three days of having contractions and having nothing happen or whatever that I was just ready to have painkillers. So she asked me, when the nurse asked me if I would like this, I wasn't thinking about that medicine that knocks me out. And sure enough, she put something in my IV and that's when it clicks in my head like, oh my God, I just did it again. So sure enough, a few minutes later, I'm starting to feel that effect again, and my eyes went to shut, and I'm trying to force them to stay open, because I don't want to completely lose, completely go out. I, I need to stay awake to keep track of how much pain I'm in. That way, when that medicine finally wears off, and I'm finally fully functional, brain-wise, I am prepared and ready for how much pain I am going to be in, because I know the pain difference is going to change. So... I knew it wasn't her, the nurse's fault because I had totally forgot that I don't like that medicine and I totally forgot to let them know and I wasn't thinking. I was just so just, I was worried about him because they told me his heart rate was dropping and then the fact that I was in pain for three days, which had never happened to me before, like with both of my other pregnancies, as soon as I started having pain, I was having pain and it was go time. This time around, it was three days worth of pain that hardly was doing anything and then finally finally I've got something but it's very slow and inactive so that leads me back to where I was at so now that I've explained that so my IV medication that they give you that's supposed to make you drowsy always knocks me out well this time I was determined very determined not to go to sleep even though they recommend that you sleep while you can that way you have enough energy to push out and stuff I didn't want to sleep because I knew because of Lily when I had Lily and so um, my eyes of course they ended up closing but my brain I kept I tried really hard to keep my brain as functional as possible but <laughs> this part gets really funny again so I was awake but not awake so my eyes were closed and no matter how hard I tried I could not open my eyes my eyes just refused to open but it's like I kept my ears on and my brain listening and all that other stuff or ears listening and brain on because I could hear the conversations around me and because I wanted to prove to everybody that I was not asleep and that I was paying attention anytime anybody was having some type of conversation and I uh, and I and I comprehended what it was about I tried to put my two cents in and <laughs> Now that I look back on it, it was completely funny because there'd be times where I'd hear a conversation and I would think it's between two people in front of me, but it was actually my husband talking to his friends on the phone. And so I would, I'm hearing my husband's part of the conversation and I would say stuff out loud like, oh, I remember that. And my husband's like just patting me like, it's okay. <laughs> like, shut up. <laughs> it's okay. 
because I'm not making any sense because yeah I and I totally realize it now because of how weird and weird it seemed like I was trying so hard to prove to everybody who was in my room which wasn't really much my husband my husband's mom my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law they were the ones there and I was trying really hard to prove to them that I was awake and that I was listening even the nurses and the doctors and whenever they came in so I believe they came in about two o'clock in the morning to check me and I was barely out of five so from 11 20 to two o'clock in the morning I had only dilated one centimeter so they were like okay we're gonna give you some Pitocin to help things move along and I was like still out of it but I said okay I was like yes what whatever is going to help you know so I was aware but kind of out of it so I remember them doing that and they I think it was maybe like an hour later they came back in to check or something like that I could have the times completely wrong because like I said I wasn't fully aware and I couldn't open my eyes to actually look at the clock so I could be wrong about the times but I do know at one point they came in to check me I was at a five they gave me Pitocin and then they came back to check me and I had no progress or when they came back to check me, they were like, okay, we're going to see if you have progress. If you do, you're good. If you don't, we're going to break your waters. And I heard them say that, and I remember saying to them, oh, my water is already broken. I re like, five seconds before they had walked in the room to tell me that, oh, we're coming in to break your waters, that um, I remember feeling something down there. It's just feeling like a gush. I just couldn't, I wasn't awake or aware enough to be like, oh, we need to call the nurses to let them know my water broke. But luckily enough, like five seconds later, they walked in anyway. And they're like, oh, we're going to break your waters. And I remember saying out loud, oh, I think I think that won't be necessary. I think my waters just broke on their own. Or at least I'm really, I remember. And I said, at least I'm really hoping that that was my water. Because if not, then that means I peed myself. And I really hope I didn't pee myself. Because that would be totally embarrassing. <laughs> and I was just like thinking in my head like what made you say that and then I was like oh yeah it's medicine um and so they um finally go to oh um so they go down there and they check they're like well let's, let's just see and I'm like I'm telling you it broke already but whatever so they go down there to check to see or whatever and at first she goes no and then she goes oh wait yet yep yeah they did and I was like, see, told you. <laughs> um, and I literally said that. I said, see, told you. And um, they were like, okay. Um, they didn't say how, how, I don't remember them saying how many centimeters I was. I think I was just conscious, barely conscious enough to hear that part. And then I think I actually, actually fell asleep for a few seconds. And then I woke back up. And when I woke back up, the medicine was starting to um, wear off. And I was like, really, finally could open my eyes and look around. And that's when I started explaining to my husband. I'm like, I'm really sorry. I know I was probably saying the weirdest shit. <laughs> and he's like, it's okay, it's okay. But yeah, that medicine, ugh, does, I hate it. But I totally, it totally was my fault. I didn't tell them that I didn't like that medicine. I could I don't even remember the name of it. That's how bad it is. <laughs> um, And so... After that, I forced my eyes open and stuff like that. Finally, they were like, okay, your, ep um, your epidural, your anesthesiologist is here to give you the epidural. And at that point, I was completely ready. Because yes, while I forced my brain to stay aware and active, I was feeling my contractions. But when that medicine started to wear off, I was finally fully um, able to comprehend how hard those contractions were hitting me. And they were hitting me pretty hard. So when they said not... I want to say 10 minutes after I fully woke up and that medicine had worn off and stuff and they were like your anesthesia is just here to give you the epidural I was like yes <laughs> um so I get the epidural and I have what they call a hot spot so so far for all three of my deliveries I've asked for the epidural this third one I told myself I wasn't going to um, I wanted, because I handled Rosalie's birth so easily, so well on my own for as long as I did, I was going to try um, for the third one to go as long as I could, but because I had been in so much pain for three days straight, um, 
and I was frustrated and I was worried about him, I I scratched that idea, as you could tell, because I accepted the other pain medicine. So, um, but so, so for all three, I didn't know what it was called for the first two, but so far whenever I've had the epidural, um, my left side, right down, like, for us girls, where you would feel your cramps at, that left side doesn't go numb the way it's supposed to. And so I still feel every contraction. Um, with Lily, my first one, it wasn't that bad. It was more like, it wasn't painful. It was more like a pressure, like I could still feel the pressure of each contraction, but um, the pain, not, not very much. And so I was able to handle it and stuff like that. With Rosalie, Whew, that pain was um that pain was there it was there and um it wasn't too bad because I was able to handle it but they kept with I I haven't done her birth story I did Lily's birth story and past videos I haven't figured out how to link videos yet but um with, I haven't done Rosalie's birth story but with her we had complications with her also they lost her heartbeat couldn't find it and had me tossing and turning all meanwhile i'm not numb i was tossing and turning at first to see if we can get the numbness to interact with my body then finally um when we find a spot that it numbs it out finally they lose her heartbeat so then i had to turn back and toss and toss and turn and during the whole tossing and turning apparently that helped my contractions progress even further so i like ended up pushing her like five five minutes after having the epidural because I had dilated so quickly with all the tossing and turning but anyways with him the same thing happened and this final finally they explained to me that it's called a hot spot and it just means that for whatever reason the epidural it acts like gravity um, on your body so it flows where it flows and some parts of the body um, even though you're laying in one position and most everything else is numb, that one part's not numb for some reason. And so they say it acts like gravity and you have to turn. Uh, um, but once again, his heartbeat was um, lowering. So I, I had to lay a certain way with him and that just so happened to be a certain way where my hot spot completely would not go numb, like at all. And so these ones were really, really painful, really painful. But finally, about, it was about five something, I want to say five o'clock in the morning, um, Thursday, November 9th, his due date, <laughs> they come in to check me and, um, they're like, oh, you're ready. I'm like, finally. So after they get everything set up and we do the practice push and she's like, oh, you will have no problem pushing. You're good. Um. I started pushing him out and he was born at 5.13 in the morning on his due date. So that, I think that's kind of awesome, kind of cool that he was born on his due date. But he, I will say, Lily's birthing experience, my first one, was by far the worst experience no matter what. Like I even had rude nurses that time. I had a nurse because it was my first time pushing and I didn't know how to push because like I said, I never went to the birth classes and stuff like that. I had no clue what I was doing. And I had a nurse for that birth actually have an attitude and I pushed like the first couple, two or three times and every time I would push and stop pushing, her head would shoot back in. So I, I actually had a nurse with that um, labor actually give an attitude and go, Ugh this is going to take forever. And I remember asking my doctor who was in between my legs at the time, who had heard her and had looked up at her, like, I can't believe you just said that type look. I looked at him and I was like, get her out of my room. And they, they followed my request. Even the doctor was pissed off at the nurse. I could tell. So they, she was removed from my room. So my first daughter's labor was labor experience. The whole experience was completely horrible. Rosalie's was the best experience I have ever had. His was right in between theirs too. It was a bad experience, but at the same time, it was good because I had wonderful doctors, wonderful nurses who were very attentive, very focused, and very just very helpful. And I I loved that experience. It was awesome.
Um, so that's pretty much his labor and delivery story. So I am going to show you. Now I know this is late and I probably should have been doing weekly updates to show you how my stomach has changed and stuff. But yeah, I'm not perfect and I messed up. And I am doing this update late because it's been several weeks. As you can tell, he actually turns a month old this Saturday. And I'm really sorry about that, guys. But he is actually still pretty small. He was, um... Born at 8 pounds, 8 ounces. So he's not a small baby. He's a big baby. But currently, right now, even though he's almost a month old, this Saturday, he is still fitting in newborn outfits. So he's still pretty small. Um, so I'll show you my, my afterbirth belly, or whatever. So it's... I'm not... Obviously, this is my third child. Sorry, my finger's in the way. This is my third child, so my stomach's not going to be completely flat like it was before, and I understand that, and I have gotten used to that, and I... What's the word? I'm proud of my stomach, even though it's not completely flat. It is... It's a belly who's that's given birth to three babies, so it's not going to be completely flat. I have worked my butt off to get it to where it is at, now already but yes it's not I still have a pudge and I'm probably gonna have that pudge for the rest of my life um, and it might even get worse if we decide to have a fourth child which right now that is a no but once we move out and we have our own place and if we're more stable and if once he's like five we might go for a fourth that's a strong might though right now it's a no for sure <laughs> but yeah so this is a month after, so it still looks like I'm like three months, <laughs> probably about. This is probably what I looked like when I was three, four, four months pregnant. But yeah, so there's without with the shirt, side, front. Ooh, this is hard to do. I need to buy an actual camera. Other side. All right, and then kind of the gross view of. So. Yeah, so this is all leftover pudge, and it is kind of still squishy, so it's still healing, I want to say. So, maybe I'll do another update in like two weeks, like after my, my six week checkup, and maybe it'll look a little different then, or something. But also, in my defense, I just got done eating, so, sorry, eating. Wendy's. Um, so that could that also helps to my pudge. So now we get to do. Yeah, now he is asleep, and I'm not waking him up for this video. So we'll just have to wait for a later video. Probably I'm probably gonna do his one month update video. So let me give you all his birth facts before I forget. So he was born November 9th at 5:13 uh, a.m. in the morning. He weighed eight pounds eight ounces. Was 20 inches. 20 and 3 fourth inches long and um, head circumference was 14 inches and yeah that's pretty much it so um, there's other stuff like his eye color and all that I'm gonna do in his one month update because his eye color did change so because all babies are born with like the gray bluish eyes and then about it takes about two weeks for their actual natural color to come in so birth eye color was the normal newborn grayish blue color. His hair is black, I will tell you that. You won't see it in this video because he has a hat on and I don't want to take it off, but maybe for his one month update, um, I'll show you what his hair looks like, but yeah. So here is little baby Anakin. Nice and sleep. Sorry the lighting isn't any better, you guys, but like I said, I don't want to move him to wake him up or anything like that. So yeah but yeah so he's here and he's beautiful and happy and healthy so i will see y'all probably hopefully uh at the end of this week when i do his one month update until then i see well see y'all next time bye